Thank you, uh, Mohammed. I'm, I'm sorry that uh, this session isn't as popular as the Muslim invasion, um, but uh, I, I do think it's got some relevance um, to, uh, to a lot of things. And in some ways it's encapsulated by, just a minute, I'll just, just encapsulated with the, uh, the title I've given, Silits and Brexit. Um, and we all know the kerfuffle this whole country's in now at the moment with Brexit. Uh, with people marching today in their hundreds of thousands uh, in the people's vote um, and uh, no nearer to uh, getting a, a, an exit from Europe sorted. Uh, I thought it's useful to have this discussion. So I'm grateful, Mohammed, for, for you to give me this platform during Bengali History Week and I'm always being grateful for the time uh, Brick Lane Circle have given me as well to say things that I want to say beyond whatever remits I may have at the time. Um, I just, I've got about, I'm going to take about, tw I think, 20 to 30 minutes of your time, about 20 odd slides, and I will be uh, reading from my book, because, because I think it's also important to, to get a sense of what was happening in 47 uh, in that bit of Assam, because so it was in Assam at that point. Um, so, this is why I think it needs covering. Um, Last year, the 70th anniversary of partition, it was interesting. Uh, great, if you're an Indian, Pakistani, uh, there was coverage of Punjab and Bengal. Uh, but I think there was a particular story here which really got overshadowed. And uh, it made me actually sit down and write it, because I've heard it many, many times. I've heard it through uh, the verbal history of my family, as well as um, uh, many, uh, many facilities of my um, father's generation, and I'm grateful that I got an opportunity to, to write in the Duck Kind of Tribune, but uh, Niaz gave me uh, an opportunity to write and publish something. So this is a product of that, uh, that uh, uh, bit I wrote in the Duck Kind of Tribune at the time. And it went, it went down well, but we'll put it this way, no one challenged the, uh, the basis of it. No one said, you, you're, you're wrong, or this is what it was, etc., etc. So I think it stands up on its own merits. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's, a, it's not only an untold story generally within partition um, when we had the 70th anniversary uh, last year. I also don't think many, dare I say, facilities here or Bangladeshis know about it. So I think it's important people understand because our, my argument will be that if that didn't go the way it did go, um, most of us wouldn't be here at all. Uh, so so I'll, I'll be clear about that. And as I said, and finally, I do think uh, uh, recent events around Assam uh, also cast a shadow over maps. And this, this also cast a shadow over things that are happening today in that part of the world. And I was interested, when, when I did walk in late uh, uh, at the end of the last session, the discussion of uh, Muslim invasion is a contemporary one, certainly in, uh, in, in uh, Assam. So, going straight uh, to why we're, current, uh, why we're currently in South I want to then just go into the partition referendum itself in 1947. Uh, there was actually, uh, and the areas I want to cover really, the public poll itself, why the poll, Memories from the Grave, that's when I'll be re making references from my father's book, which explains the build-up, I think, better than I could, and anyone else that I can imagine at the moment, although he's not around. Uh, the result itself, and then the, imp uh, the impact it had on Independence Day and the art of the whole, uh, which I think uh, is where we, we, we need to take it. Um, so if I go to the, um, the poll, and why the poll itself. Well, funny enough, it was, you think uh, the, the Brexit may be rushed. Well, this was a rushed <laughs> poll, I can tell you this. It was declared by the British Raj on the 3rd of July, and almost the following week it was undertaken on the 6th or 7th of July. You know, we didn't have several months of these issues. We didn't have uh, like we had, we had on the, the original referendum on Brexit. Uh, we certainly didn't have a year to discuss it like the Scots did, uh, whether they would stay in or out. And the referendum was simply uh, the question put was should select join East Bengal? Um, and, and it wasn't actually saying Pakistan specifically, it actually said specifically East Bengal. Um, but there was a context. Uh, but, uh, why this poll was put to uh, the Silip division within Assam. And that context was Silip was seen as a Muslim majority division with a, within a Hindu majority province. 
Um, and it wasn't just a religious um, thing, so supposedly. It was also a linguistic one. Um, Bengalis, uh, th these are Bengali-speaking people in Assam uh, who had previously actually been part of Bengal and now part of Assam. Um, so the, uh, the, the, uh, pro the uh, chief minister at the time of Assam was keen to have this put up uh, as, 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 as an issue. Um, the, um, and, and, and they were hoping, actually, that one of the benefits the Assamese wanted was to homogenise their culture as well. Um, so it kind of worked. But they, they thought of it in two ways. Although I think predominantly the proposers uh, did see it in religious terms. It was also adopted as an issue by the uh, Jinnah as one of the six provinces of, of Pakistan that he wanted to adopt. And we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, and, and, and they did make a big issue and it explains, I think, what happened during the campaign. And finally, one of the things you won't have picked up, actually, I think one of the issues there was at the time, and this is things that I picked up from, from my family history as much as anything else, I think there was a, an issue for <coughs> Assamese because actually the Assamese administration was particularly dominated by those of Siliti descent. And I think uh, one, of the, one of the rationales of the chief minister at the time was actually deal with that as an issue, uh, which has not, I don't think, come out. But that, is also, that was also something, I think, behind the poll, uh, which happened on the 3rd. And interesting enough, um, it was something which, um, when, when the British, uh, Brit uh, British government pushed through the um, Indian Independence Act, there was an Article 3, which actually allowed this to happen. It was given as one of the uh, final powers that Baton had to make um, independence happen quickly and peacefully, hopefully, uh, which wasn't the case, as we all know. Um, so th 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 that's the poll and why the poll. Um, memories from the grave. This is where I'll, I'll start quoting from a book my father wrote, it's, it's, it's almost ten years ago, uh, Am I probably John Moore or Ragnati? Sorry, my Bengali isn't as. Thank you. Your, your Bengali is definitely better than mine, so I'll, I'll give you that. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be quoting from that because I think uh, that, that there are insights there which I, I am not able to project. And I think actually one of the, uh, the things that we should always look at in any community is the, 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 the vocal uh, history of a community, very often word of mouth, which uh, needs to be documented and passed on. So I, I will be extensively quoting in the, in the second third from, from his book. The, um, Right. The other thing to, to realise, there were other major events happening uh, around, uh, around in, uh, in Bengal generally. It was obviously the famine of 43. I've heard stories, and I'm sure if you, if you talk to our uh, fathers, fathers and mothers and our grandparents, they, have, they will have some recollections of this. And uh, um, that, that's, uh, that's not surprising. The end of the Second World War was specifically... Uh, important in Assam generally and uh, in Silla because actually the Japanese weren't too far away from if they were going to come into uh, British India they would have come in through uh, Assam and Bengal um, but they had made quite major inroads in uh, what is now Myanmar, Burma um, so it has a relevance and then obviously the campaign for, uh, for the British to quit India was a uh, major uh, um, considerations um, the, um, so, so, so that's the, the overall background. Uh, this is where I'll start quoting from uh, my, my father's uh, book. And um, in, in, in the build-up to the polls, uh, it was quite interesting. And he was a 13, 14 year old primary school student. So he starts, uh, when I was a primary school student, the non-corporation movement was going on. Almost every day there would be a demonstration of students in front of the DC's office. 
The Congress acti activists would have meetings and processions. The police would beat them black and blue. Uh, we used to observe silently as some town dwellers would, would assist the police in beating up Congress activists, and some of whom were Hindus. Later I realised that it was a mistake to take every congressman uh, for a Hindu. Uh, so that's his recollection as, as a school kid. Um, um, and he, he also remembers very well the political activity. Um, uh, he's, he, did, he says in the book, there were all sorts of rumours in the air. India and Pakistan would definitely be se separated. There would be a united Bengal. Punjab would become a separate country. I missed this all. The question that was troubling the people of Silet was, what will happen to Silet? Would it be part of India along with Assam? Uh, or would it be part of Pakistan? Uh, we learnt that this would be decided through a public poll, although Silic was a stronghold of Congress and Hindus. The Muslim League, League built a powerful team which started a rigorous campaign for union with Pakistan. Uh, we later learned that they were funded by the central branch of the Muslim League. Uh, uh, we also learnt that uh, Shawadi was most enthusiastic about including Silic in Pakistan and played the most active role in this respect. He sent a team of about 40 students to select a campaign for Pakistan. Arrangements were made for this team to stay at schools in the select area where we went in groups to meet them. Uh, we were hardly 13 or 14 year olds then. So, you know, it was actually the. For, for school, school kids were getting involved in this, although they had no basis of, 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 of voting, they could see uh, these were dramatic times, and as I said, it was a very intense few weeks. This was the month before partition itself. Um, and uh, he continues that, uh, on one particular day, the students of our school pulled the Union Jack from the court building and hoisted the flag of the Muslim League in its place. They brought the Union Jack flag to Golbinda Park following a scuffle with the Assam Rifles. When the district commissioners of Slit arrived, demanding that the flag be handed back over very by such a contemporary of theirs, um, thrust his thumb into the DC's mouth. I'm not sure how you do that, but can you imagine someone speaking in a, a bit of authority and sticking their thumb into their mouth? Yeah. To this day, his bravery in performing such an action amazes me. Compared to the brutality with, with which the Bangladeshi police treat politicians now, especially women activists, the police force of the British government and the members of the Assam Rifles appear to have been much better. However, one day there was a clash between the police and the students as an attempt was made to retrieve the Union Jack from Silet uh, Tana. A student called a class died and others were injured when the Assam rifles fired at them. Having witnessed all of this with my bare eyes, I can claim to be an eyewitness of the anti-British movements. Uh, this is the kind of thing I, I think if, if you, you wouldn't get if, uh, if I was just going through uh, the, the, the history. Uh, and I think it's uh, for, for all his contemporaries who are still around and those who aren't, uh, this, this is by far the most significant uh, event uh, in their lives. Um, he also uh, uh, remembers uh, the political leaders who came along at the time uh, in, in the campaigning, uh, in the build-up. And one of the most significant things I think happened Actually, before the, the, uh, the, the actual um, ref, uh, referendum itself was um, Jinnah in March um, visited um, Silet. Um, now, the, uh, the interesting thing about it was that he was brought in uh, by um, yeah, le leading lights of the Muslim League. Um, the, uh, and, and this is in one of their homes. Uh, this is the late Abdul Motin Chaudhry. Um, now, it's unlikely, unlikely any of us will recognise most of them unless you're family members of, of the uh, Abdul Motin Chaudhry. But there is one person that's worth, should be able to recognise. Um, I'll give you, I'll, if, if you get it right, I will, uh, I'll give you a copy of my dad's book. But there is someone. Someone uh, in that photo, if you can carefully look, I'll, I'll keep it on at the back, at the end, so you can have a, a, a good look. There is someone here who uh, w wasn't only involved with 
the uh, referendum in, uh, in 47, but actually passed away in East London as a community activist. It was one of the last, he's like, spent his last, actually not 20, I'd say, last 30 years involved in East London politics. Um, but that was, that was the kind of level of involvement we had of people coming here. Uh, coming to Sill at the time, Jinnah hadn't really made it appearance. He was brought in to incorporate uh, Sillet incorporation to Pakistan uh, as part of uh, his six province, provinces of uh, Pakistan. And he, he seemed, as from, from what I can see in the photo, well, you can see his health is not particularly good. Uh, it was clearly his dying years, um, but he, was, he felt comfortable with women and children, which was an issue at the time. That, that's not... That's not De deny that at all, and in that respect, he was progressive um, because actually it, it does come up as an issue in the poll and uh, in, in the, the referendum. Um, so, yeah, we, we had the, the, uh, the, the great and the good coming along to, to, the, um, to the polls and helping out. Actually, actually uh, there is um, Chef Najib probably came during that time, he was one of the 40 students that. Uh, was sent over to do the campaigning for the Muslim League because the people don't realise how he actually started his politics from the Muslim League and, and came away from that before we got to uh, our only league. Anyway, here's the results uh, in stark terms. It's a, a, a clearer majority for uh, for leaving uh, Assam than we have for leaving uh, the uh, European Union. Uh, so it's 57 43 in favour of Sillet joining. Um, joining uh, East Bengal. Uh, interestingly enough, 22% uh, of the votes are invalid. Um, for many people, this would have been the first time that they uh, would have voted. Um, so that, that's not surprising, actually, in some ways. Um, and as I told you, it was literally 3rd of July, following week, it was, uh, it, it, uh, the, the polls itself happened. Um, and, 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 and there was... Um, Controversy in itself. I mean, I, I, again, quoting from my father's book, uh, he says, "Finally, finally, the day of the poll came. On the first day of the uh, of the long poll, Muslim women were prevented from voting by female activists of Congress. Um, uh, however, the next uh, the next day, however, Muslim leaders fetched the female voters from their homes and arranged for them to vote. While it drizzled throughout the day." People waited anxiously for the results. As far as I can remember, 51% of the voters are in favour of Pakistan. Uh, Congress election symbols were House, and the Muslim League's, uh, that is Pakistan, was the axe. And we used to chant the slogan, strike the box of the House with the axe. Um, which is an interesting slogan, because I certainly wouldn't suggest any political party to go with a slogan like that. I uh, slash your opponents with an axe. But that, that was the contemporary context, and uh, whilst he may have got the figures wrong about the actual percentages, I think it was actually a, a much more closer affair than uh, I think the actual figures suggest because of the numbers, uh, numbers of invalid uh, ballots. Uh, the issue about, it was interesting actually, the poll was extended over two days uh, because uh, complaints were made about women not being able to vote on the first day, uh, that this prevention... Uh, of uh, Muslim women uh, going to the polls was an issue. It's a bit like uh, there's, a, there's an election in Afghanistan at the moment, we've just extended it because of the bombings, uh, which is understandable. It's, a, uh, it's, it's a clearly uh, a, a significant issue to consider if you're stopping people going to the polls. Um, so that, 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 uh, that was a uh, significant um, uh, there. And the, the other thing, actually, at the time, I think uh, um, people don't realise, actually, um, how little Muslim women could move around. Um, in those times, certainly in, in Salat, it was probably much, much more conservative than it is now. Uh, if a woman turned up to a public meeting, she would be expected to wear, wear a hookah. Uh, that, was, that was pretty standard. Uh, pretty standard uh, uh, emphasis on any participation at all but, uh, in, the, in some of the public meetings that happened at the time. But nonetheless, they tackled that issue. Um, you know, they, they did get them out. Otherwise, I don't think you would have had uh, the, the, the mandate, even with uh, the number of 
uh, invalid, um, invalid uh, balance. Um, but the, the other thing which uh, uh, I, I, I want to emphasize is the, the, the women's involvement um, from my dad's uh, book again, uh, by this quote, um, and some of the characters. The, um, all the members of our family, even the women and children, worked hard to persuade people to vote in favour of Pakistan in the public poll. Our mums, aunts and grandmothers worked especially hard in teaching people how to cast their votes. Jobina Khatun was the most prominent of the women leaders. She was the Begum Rokia of Silet in the field of women's development. Uh, despite being the daughter of a high-ranking government official and the wife of a public prosecutor, she worked as one of the leaders of Congress without any hesitation. The women of Silat worked for the Pakistani movement under her leadership. It's worth... She, she, she was a character that played a key role. I, I think there is some contradictions. She was an active Congress member, but was, but was actively working towards people uh, saying, uh, saying yes to this... Uh, uh, to respond in, uh, to this referendum. It's a bit like some of the, uh, the, the lead Brexit people in the Labour Party. So it's not, it's not unusual, but uh, the, 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 there were <coughs> people like her who did actually, it was her actually who put in the objections about uh, Muslim women being restricted to go into the polls on the first day. Um, I, I, I did see her in, in, uh, in the 1970 general election, the only first free and fair election Pakistan had at the time, uh, and she played a critical role then as well. Sometimes you can't get rid of these characters, they'll, they'll always make their, uh, make, make their uh, presence felt. And the final thing, uh, this is a bit of acad academia, but actually it's, it's a rare case where people choose to opt out of a country they're in at the moment to go into a new one. Because um, the usual politics don't allow you to break away. Uh, this wasn't was actually encouraged by the authorities and some, uh, but in effect, we were moving from India, British India, into uh, Pakistan. So I, I, I'd go, and I would suggest it's a, it's a case of electoral credentialism, uh, certainly in the Indian subcontinent, and it's quite rare uh, for this to happen. Another reason why I think it should have some more, um, some more light set um, um, thrown at it. <laughs> You know, here's, the, here's the breakdown of the votes. Now, this is quite interesting because um, it shows you the sub-districts in Silet, including, including the one that most people forget about, uh, Kerem Gonch. Now, the, the, those of us who know about Silet will know that, uh, that there's, a, there's a bit of it still in India, actually. But the interesting thing about this breakdown, it will show to you clearly... Uh, they voted in favour, 41,262, uh, to go into East Bengal uh, against 40,000 uh, a, a stayed in Assam. Whilst Molly Baza, there's Molly Baza, um, actually voted to stay in Assam. Um, and uh, with 33,000 against 31,000 who, uh, who, who wanted to stay in Assam. Which bits ended up in Bangladesh? We all know Molly Buzzer did and Karen Grange didn't. So there were, even after the polls across the whole of the district, um, it played the, 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 the way the votes fell across the whole of the, uh, uh, the, the di division also had a bearing, um, which I'll explain next. Um, so look, what we, on, on polling day itself, you know, on the 14th of August, um, Pakistan flag went up, the Indian flag, I think, the 15th of August, and the British Raj flag went down. People don't realise there was actually a separate flag for British India, and this, uh, this, this was it. Um, and uh, it was, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a momentous uh, event, and I'll just uh, again quote from my father's book. Uh, on the 14th of August, 1947, the District Commissioner of Silet, Mr. Kushad, formally raised the flag of Pakistan in front of his office. Although we were still very apprehensive and unsure as to whether the mighty British really had left India and whether we were really free, our happiness knew no bounds. Little did we know that we were being freed from one master 
only to be ruled by another. Soon we came to realise that we had fallen out of the British pan into the Pakistani stove. Intriguing. I, I, what I find intriguing about that is as even as uh, a teenager, they were aware of what, of what was happening, actually. Um, and that uh, it was almost certainly reinforced by my grandfather's generation, uh, who essentially was saying Pakistan is in the world in 47, and by 71 was saying Joy Bangla. I think that's, that's an amazing move, if you think about it, in political <coughs> emphasis and views. Uh, but that's the reality. And they, they, as you can see, clearly they were uh, saying Pakistan is in the bath, uh, and su subsequently, and, the, and they realised at the time this may be the issue uh, further down uh, the road. But that's, that's his recollection of a, of a school kid, of a momentous occasion, um, and what, what it me might mean for the immediate future. Uh, when, the, when the flags were um, going up and, and the British Raj was going down. I was actually trying to find a flag of the, the, the flags going up whilst the British one was going down. So if anyone has come across one in, in, uh, in, in uh, East Pakistan, Silet, it would be, I haven't seen any, uh, and there must be. Um, I've seen ones in West Pakistan, but never in East uh, Pakistan. Because whatever, you know, what, what we... Uh, Whatever we may think about Pakistan, uh, there's no doubt it, it was the, the independence then was a prelude for the subsequent um, liberation of Bangladesh. Uh, I, I'm not sure the, the, the liberation of Bangladesh would have happened if it was uh, if we didn't have uh, Pakistan independence in '47 and Slit uh, incorporated in this way. That's that's what that's the view I hold. You may disagree, and I'm happy to discuss that subsequently. The, uh, that, that's two thirds of the way through. The, the other thing which I wanted to go through was just revisiting the Redcliffe Line, which uh, is quite notorious. And there's a number of there's about three issues: uh, enclaves. You, you can't you can't believe what a cock up uh, the British Raj made of the transition over from India to uh, from uh, from uh, over to Assam and other issues <coughs> around there. Karim Gonj, I've just mentioned, and the Assamese migrants, which I picked up on from the previous um, speaker. Um, that was the declared partition boundaries in Bengal and Assam by the Radcliffe uh, Commission. I think that's the best one I've seen around. Um, the red line is what, what was eventually uh, East Bengal, Pakistan, subsequently Bangladesh. The blue line was actually the, the, first, the first proposal. The Tikka line. Sorry, the blue line. Yeah. The blue line. So, for example, interesting, in the select uh, the referendum context, actually, Karim Gonj was included. If you see, see that hook there, uh, that bit there, the, uh, the bits, the other bits to notice is that Chittagong Hill Tract wasn't inside the Red Cleave, yeah. but was added. That whole track there. Um, and there was, and, and also the same with Kulna, that the red line, is, oh, sorry, the blue line, yeah, was added <coughs> to what is now uh, Bangladesh, uh, when previously it hadn't. And even before the lines were drawn by Radcliffe, you remember he was a, a QC who was sent from the UK into India, hadn't been there ever in his life, and was given a remit within six weeks to come up with some boundaries for uh, Pakistan. Um, on the basis of the ethnic makeup of um, the, the cities, towns, and villages, um, he had absolutely no background at all. There was very little scope to to disagree with him. The only context where it's alleged um, originally, originally he had uh, included Kolkata in uh, East Bengal, and um, but that was. Uh, that, the, the word pressure put him, on him by Nehru to drop that idea altogether because he wasn't going to allow that to happen. Oddly enough, at the time, I, uh, there was a Muslim majority there. Uh, Sorry, that Do you mean Kolkata? Sorry, Kolkata. Kolkata was dropped from from being included within the uh, the blue boundary. Uh, uh, it, it's alleged because Nehru objected to the idea that Kolkata was going to be lost to India. Um, and at the time, it is clear 
It was uh, actually, there were a Muslim majority. If you go to Kolkata now, I, I'd say there's about 30% uh, Bengali Muslims or Muslim Bengalis, whatever way you want to say. So you can imagine it could well have been 50 odd percent at that time. And it's quite interesting, but that's not, that's the story behind, before the line was drawn. And in some ways, what we're dealing with here is a story between uh, the red line and the blue line. Uh, was Col Kolkata's inclusion or not was just beyond that, before he, he, he drew the line. Um, but it just shows, I mean, there were, yes, the original um, shape, you can see, uh, uh, Chittagong Hill Tracks wasn't part of it, Kulna wasn't, um, and... Pontagor. Sorry? Pontagor. And Ch Karen Gorn, which was inside, but was uh, thrown out, um, even though there was a mandate, uh, I would say, from the polls. So that that is... Um, I think a major reference point, and it's, it's just worth studying a bit, uh, not only in the context of uh, this um, ref uh, this uh, referendum in '47 in Suez, but also in the context of uh, what was eventually added into East Bengal at that time. Now, now we come to Karen Gonj. As you as you can see, its structure kind of it neat, neatly sits. Uh, in the arm, I, I, I imagine, I always think of it as an arm of Bangladesh. It's got its own parliamentary seat uh, in India. Uh, it's a scheduled caste seat. Uh, it's got, clearly got its own identity. Um, and I understand, and I actually I made a point of uh, last night listening to their local station. I could understand it. You know, they were talking Bengali. Bengali I could understand. Uh, they weren't talking Hindi, Assamese, or anything like this. So but they're still, I, I think, linguistically, uh, very uh, close ties. You know, look, I'm a second generation Greek, so if I can understand them, uh, I'm sure many, many of you would be able to as well. And Bengal is from uh, Bangladesh. But it's quite interesting to see how, um, how, how, how it fits in at the moment, and where it fits into slit as well. I mean, they're, they're the four subdivisions. If, uh, if you go by what I was suggesting, maybe Molly Bazaar shouldn't have been included, given they didn't vote for it. You would have dropped the yellow bit and added this red bit on instead um, in, 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 into, into Bangladesh. Funny enough, I don't know why, but the only version of that map I could find of that uh, northeast part of India was, was in French. So that's why it's in French. But uh, maybe I was uh, researching too late in, in the evening uh, over that. Anyway, that's Karen Gonj, which, which I think is one of the legacies. The next one is um, the enclaves. Boy, are there enclaves. I mean, yeah. yeah the, uh, and the enclaves were an issue that hadn't actually been addressed until two years ago. And bizarrely, uh, when, I don't know if you noticed, but Modi got first elected a few, uh, three years ago. Was it three years ago? Is it or two? Yeah, three, years. yeah, three years ago. Actually, he, everyone thought he'd concentrate on domestic affairs. He didn't. He actually concentrated all his time and energy on foreign affairs, and still is. And one of the things he's actually, I, I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, I'm not signed up to his domestic agenda, of course. But the, uh, one of the things he did sort out was these enclaves. Basically, they're pockets of land owned by India, uh, owned by India within Bangladesh, and uh, Bangladesh conversely owns enclaves within India, along, all the way along the border. The nearest comparison I can make is a bit like, I don't know, if you bought a house today and you, you, re you were told and, and your exchange completed, and then you're told that a part of your back garden is owned by the person next door, and not only next door, the person two doors along. It, it, it is really uh, bizarre, I, I think. But that's how that, um, um, that, that push for a, a quick um, partition, I think, fools many of these problems. And I think adds to my suggestion that the whole Merle administration by the British Raj. It wasn't just... Uh, uh, just... Um, uh, just... Uh, uh, 
the, 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 uh, the, the inconsistencies with poles and things like this, but they actually, did, when they went about the nitty gritty of transferring land and things like this, just didn't do a job. I mean, for example, if that had happened now, you'd sue the people immediately. Um, in, in any private context, and you would do it uh, presumably internationally as well. Anyway, there were a whole series of these enclaves, which was a legacy, and you can see it wasn't just, it's in many in Assam as well as further along. Um, and it was only recently sorted out, two years ago. Um, so, um, it, it's, I mean, can you imagine if you live in one of those enclaves? Uh, if you're an Indian living in uh, an enclave in Bangladesh, if you didn't have documentation uh, that the Bangladesh is accepted, you, you, you're stuck in that enclave. You, could, you just literally cannot move around. And also, given any services that a government may give them, protection, uh, basic health service or whatever, education, was not impossible for those countries to deliver because there was such a, such, such a way away. But yeah, it's an issue there, and it's, I think, another legacy that we should forget. Um, the final legacy is um, this issue of Assami migrants hasn't gone away, as, as your last speaker uh, suggested. Uh, and more recently, that the, the, uh, the, the Indians have uh, made a point of, uh, well, yeah, Potentially excluding four million people who haven't got the haven't got their documentation. It's a bit like uh, the Windrush West Indians. You know, suddenly they're told, you know, you have your papers aren't right. So you know, we're going to send you for what? If you leave the country, well, you're not going to come back in. Anyway, something like this could possibly be on the agenda here uh, in Assam of not hundreds of hundreds of thousands of people, but several million. Um, and I would suggest that's, and, it's, and actually the people who are most fearsome of, of that are Bengali Muslims in India uh, who are in Assam at this moment in time. Um, I, again, watching that TV program I watched, the main news item was, would you believe it, uh, the panic people have got into about finding, finding their papers uh, to, to, make, uh, to, to, to claim legitimate Indian citizenship. So, the, the three, I think, legacies of, um, of, of the Poles and uh, the, Ratcliffe, um, um, the Ratcliffe line are the, the enclaves, it was, it was, it was yeah, a nightmare, only recently sorted out, Karen Gonj missed out, which, if anyone could explain how that happened, uh, that would be handy, because no one seems to know what, what the British Royals did there. Another case, I think, Mail administration of complete cock up by, by them. Uh, and then uh, the Assamira migrants issue was actually, in some ways, the context of why this poll was put in in the first place, 47, and it's still there, uh, whether we like it or not. Um, so, in conclusion, um, I think the poll gave a mandate uh, for Silit's incorporation into East Bengal. I, just, I don't think there would would have been any other basis to do it. Uh, funnily enough, I think uh, as a result of the poll, uh, I think there was a lot less communal violence in Silla than there were in other parts of Bengal. Uh, if, you, if you remember, that, uh, that in a place like uh, Noakali, there was, there was extensive communal violence. I think this actually gave a mandate to, um, to, to the transfer. Conceptual terms, which made it more acceptable, even though you know, there are issues about the polls itself. Uh, I, for example, don't I can't work out why, if you could have a poll in Assam about Soviet inclusion into East Bengal, why you couldn't have a similar poll under the British, uh, part, part three of the uh, British Indi uh, Indian Independence Act in uh, Kashmir at the same time. You know, they rushed, they rushed this one through. They could have done something, a similar exercise in Kashmir and saved a lot of people, a lot of hassle in that part of the world. But nonetheless, I mean, let's be grateful. Uh, it did happen here, and I think it gave us uh, a legitimacy. Um, actual boundaries and en enclaves illustrate, as I said, the, the Mel administration of British Raj. There's another example I, I would like to give you, which, um, which again, gets lost. And I think, uh, again, who, who, how could you do it in this day and age? Um, the boundaries of India and Pakistan were not told to the public uh, until two days after independence. 
If you, if you just think about that for a moment. If you're concerned about what side of the boundary you're in in your Pakistan, and, and you're going to make uh, and you're going to make a move, uh, you, you would at least want to be doing it on the basis of knowing what that boundary is. I've got no doubts that it probably uh, didn't help at all with what happened subsequently in the partition uh, with the common violence. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure uh, what, what part it played in Punjab, but uh, I don't know, it's a bit like you know, telling people you've got move, well, Northern Ireland, for example, suddenly telling them that you've got to go, uh, the Republicans you've got to go to the south and vice versa, and you've, and, and you've got no idea what the boundaries are. It wouldn't be acceptable now, why is it acceptable now? Um, it, it's another one of these, uh, I, I think, horrendous things that happened, and it probably exacerbated uh, the, um, the, the partition itself. Uh, and there's another issue with the actual borders and enclaves. Um, the four million uh, alleged uh, illegal migrants in Assam, it's not said openly, but where are they suggesting they will go? Um, and I, I think it's undoubtedly the case that they, 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 the assumption is Bangladesh. Um, now, if, if I were a Bangladesh politica, I'd say, well, if you're talking about Assami refugees, what about, I'd raise the Karen Gomez issue. Because clearly, uh, uh, for whatever reason, uh, that should have been part of East Bengal in 47, and uh, presumably part of Bangladesh now. Um, so that is uh, the issue, I think, uh, in, in, in Bangladesh. And then for us, uh, it does make me wonder that uh, if we were in India uh, as a result of the part, uh, a, a part of that referendum, would those of Sileti descent be here at all? Would it have been possible to have got to uh, the, U the UK, uh, given, I, tell me if I'm wrong, that there are very rarely people of, uh, of Karen Gonj descent amongst Bangladesh issues. Plenty of facilities, as we know, if anything, too many. Um, but the, uh, that, 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 that's a reality I think we, we've also got to uh, uh, face, I think. I, I'm, not convi I'm, I'm convinced if we hadn't gone this way, well, if we hadn't gone this way in the 47 poll, uh, yeah, ma ma many uh, Bangladeshis today in the United Kingdom wouldn't be here. I'm not sure we had the access to power to New Delhi uh, that we did have from Silip to Dhaka uh, to, 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 to lobby and get things done in the interest of that division within uh, Bangladesh. Right, I've come to the end. I hope I've not exhausted you. I've tried, I've, we've covered a lot of ground. Uh, if nothing else, it's food for thought. Um, Thank you for giving me the opportunity to <laughs> uh, say this. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's almost a, over a year since the partition actually, uh, the 70th anniversary of partition actually happened in the UK. And as you know, it was given huge, extensive platforms on the BBC and what have you. So I'm very grateful for you've given me a platform here to discuss this uh, in, 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 in the heart of the East End. And thank you for coming in. We got about 30-40 uh, minutes for discussion question. Uh, I'll go back to that photo because I, 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 this, has anyone recognised anyone there at all? Do you recognise? Sorry, do you want yeah. a question? Uh, yeah, I've got a question and I think I know who it is. Yeah. Um, so my question is, can you name the female uh, politician you mentioned? I think it's actually. Jobida Khatun. She. Jobida. Yeah. She. she uh, I. I, I know her via. She. She, she was. Um, I. Well, she was in the same bit of Sillet town as my family. We're not actually related, but she had clearly a lot of influence over the women folk in our family at that time and in 1971 and 70 uh, liberation. Um, and, and I think it was interesting, from what I could make of her politics, she was active in the Congress Party, but, but here she was pushing for, um, uh, we, we'd, go for uh, we, we'd go for East Bengal. Um, but you know, it's no, it's no different from dare I say the contradictions you have today with, uh, you know, Brexiteers within the Labour Party and Remainers within the Tories. They don't, you don't necessarily keep to those positions on your party political allegiances. Someone I think uh, we, we need to spend a bit more time looking at because, uh, I, like I said, she played a role in '47 and also 1970. Uh, and I, I, she, she was. Here's one story I heard of her. 
Um, I think when I mentioned earlier, um, women were expected to wear the burqa when they went to public meetings. She only, not only did she go to these meetings, she also made a point of taking it off. And at the time, in the 40s, that was a huge scandal. Uh, so, and, and it was quite clear she had the support of her husband, uh, who we, we've always called T.P. Dada. Uh, he was a public prosecutor in Pakistan, and her father. Otherwise, she could never have done that. Not, not, in those times, uh, she could, it would, uh, would have been impossible to, to do things like that in that context. And yet, she was the one that went out and made sure that the polls were extended by a second day to make sure women were allowed to vote the following day. Just a related thing. Um, you know uh, Begum Paista Ikramunna? Yeah. She was the cousin of Sorwati. Yeah. She dedicates her book called From Parda to Parliament to her husband who took her out of order and regretted it ever since. Yeah, sorry, sorry, don't know if you have the competition. Yeah. Um, is it Ayu Khan? No, I can't say that. Oh, it's not? No. Okay. That the, that, that, the, 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 if it helps, <coughs> the majority, apart from Jinnah, are Chaudhrys except for one person. Qureshi. No, no Qureshi's there. I made sure I didn't, I, 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 I didn't want to show a bias there at all as well. Can I leave you to Hassan Raja at all? No. Okay, we'll keep going and I'll tell you the, the last thing I'll do, I'll tell you. Can you take questions from this side? Yeah. I think one of the biggest mistakes is when you revisit the history, especially the partition history, one thing you need to remember, and that's uh, if you read the Just One Thing's book about the partition things uh, he mentioned, and I think every revisit need to remember the situation at that time. When you compare it like Jake's Victoria thing is happening now, uh, with the time scale with the things that remember the, what was the situation at that time. And one of the things uh, I just quoting from a book uh, written by a very known historian. The, on June 4th, 1947, Jinnah, Lord Mountbatten and Nehru did a meeting. And that meeting they decided and broadcast many things. One of the main thing was the partition originally decided that it will happen in June 1948, but Lord Mountbatten clearly decided that it will happen 15th of August 1947. Just a little over a month, but originally they decided that it will happen in 1948. And that was the reason of this little date, otherwise people will be confused. And that only not only Assam or Pakistan or Sylhet, it happened to Belsistan as well. Belsistan got only four or five days to decide these things. And many other decisions they make which will give you the answer. For example, how they will decide the boundary. They made an announcement. They, these things will be secret. You mentioned until the independence is declared. And after two days or three days, they declared the boundary. So that was the decision they made with these three person decided that it will be later. Okay, number three. On that day, they made the after these two provinces. One is Punjab, Belchistan, and this part of the Asham will be voted. Fourth of January, fourth uh, of June. They did, they did not put the date, but they declared on this radio broadcast the part of Asham and part of Punjab will be voted the who is going back. And the boundary will be decided for these two provinces by a commission. And that commission, when after the vote happened, that commission, you made many complicated, you know, uh, not that complicated, many complex things, for example, like pouring bonds, for example, like many, even the other part uh, related to, you know, the uh, district of Dinaspur, there are some, some Muslim parts are there as well. So the commission decided many things at that time, and you know probably the how the Red Cliff came, why they bring Red Cliff to uh, draw this arbitrary boundary. 
So a lot of things happened at that time because of his hurry. It will happen after one year, but he decided or declared it will happen just next month. So many things, if you think they're like, people get confused, say, okay, oh yeah, how can it happen? The 3rd of July, they announced, and 7th of July, it voted in comparison with the recent event or in comparison with the recent, with such a big decision. But that was the, that was the time. And that thing, all things happened like that. And the Indian Independence Act came in July. So the 4th of June, they declared all this, and then bring it to the parliament, and Lord Mountbatten, and then all other things. And some of the things happened which, like, when the first boundary, Lord Mountbatten decided the which province will go higher and things like that. It was very secret, but Nehru got it somehow. And there was rumors that one of the Hindu secretary of Lord Mountbatten gave it to Nehru. And when Nehru got it, Nehru talked to Mountbatten and made some changes. I'm not saying that it's, 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 it's all this documentary history. So many complex things happened at that time regarding this referendum and regarding this how Silet came to the Asham, which in historical context you need to consider from that time, that situation, and that part of the world. Yeah. I think which, which I think I have, that. I don't dispute any points, but the religious start, I understood, as far as I'm aware, there was no, no polls made anywhere else. No, no, no. no. Well, Baluch, Baluch, Baluchistan did, they didn't have a poll. It was drag kicking and screaming into Pakistan, as far as I'm aware. Uh, but the only time, the only time they used the Indian Independence Act to have a poll on anywhere along those boundaries was here. No, no, no. two parts. You, two, in Baluchistan, there was a poll. I thought, sorry, parts sorry, of sorry, parts sorry, parts sorry, parts sorry parts. I thought in Baluchistan, they were told after independence they were in Pakistan and. The, the king at the time, because there's the other thing we don't uh, realise in, in uh, part, during partition, they, and this is, what the, uh, this is the other aspect of Kashmir people often forget, uh, the British Raj historically had links, didn't directly rule a lot of places, it did it through uh, kings and queens and maharajas and what have you, and gave them the option to opt in and out of well, whatever they decide to be in. In the case of Balochistan, uh, I forgot the name of the, the king there. He, he, he thought he was king of the realm, but it was incorporated in Pakistan and then it was told subsequently by the, the, the new, new powers in Pakistan uh, that you're part of uh, West Pakistan now. And, and the, that, that was it. Uh, they, the, they declared independence in their parliament well, after... I, I'm, aware that, yeah, I'm aware of their history, it was bizarrely, but that, that's, that, that's, that's my reading of it. And I have come across Baluchis here, in this country, who look at big boys in admiration because at least we broke away from Pakistan and got away from them, which is something they would love to do, but the, the means aren't there, or the possibilities, it's just such, the, 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 their numbers are much smaller than our numbers were uh, in, in what was then East Pakistan. Yes, I'm really sorry, I don't start this one, but I was just wondering if I was saying question before actually. I, I live in a, I mean, in this country as a family 60 years. It's not the longest period, but I'm still being told by new immigrants uh, from Europe. I'm being questioned about my origin as a Vermont village, and this is very interesting. So I didn't have that 20 years ago. I'm interested in the colonial mentality or inheritance of the white uh, overlords of the partition, which I think was more and more coming out. There were many people on that pattern, but many administrators being sent over, and not just lines, but attitude being injected. Jinnah argued with Lenin Gandhi as well, being, were meant to that those colonial instruments for, for that kind of uh, modern European state. But I'm intrigued with how much we live in this country right now as part of government and university policy and uh, the zoning of where we live in this country. According to partition lines, because of the, the anti law mentality of, of, of administrators and politicians in this country, this is because Kashmir is in the north. Indian Bengal is in the south, Bangladesh is from uh, Silla in the east, Bangladesh is not from Silla in North London, up to a certain extent, and uh, uh, Punjab is in West London. I, I feel like I can be born here and can bamboozle by the idea of human rights, which we don't, if you look at some of the laws, that we have been actually living partition on purpose, not necessarily only by our own actions, by secret policies on Commonwealth foreign citizens. Yeah, I've experienced it. Yeah. Well, we're living at the end of the war itself where the all of the South Asian people uh, will be revealed after Brexit.
Brexit and the ignoring of European crime, which is extremely massive, will be exposed. So I'm wondering how much the partition was a European project, despite the forces of the people and the politicians. And if there's evidence of those kind of individuals from British universities or administrations who drive these conflicts, which cause us to suffer, <coughs> while under the fiction of living uh, the hopes and dreams of law. Because I don't think we live in this country under the rule of law. If you look at the legislation, legislation, you'll find that's true. And, and, and I'm intrigued by how we're living partition now because of their power of imperialism, administrative the state, and also the partition. Describing and creating the It's not so much an area of finding something out. And, and I would like to research that. So the English elite and in creating conflict, social and death, even at the point of liberation, and to the state as we live in this country. <coughs> Okay, look, I, I was, look, if there was a European uh, view on this, I, I'm certainly aware of it. At the time in 47, the only people who were in a position to exert their power, power on them and their independence and where their independence happened at all were the Americans. Europe was not in a state to... Um, the, the, the rest of Europe was just not in a state to, 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 to partake in the court. Not, nor, nor were the Brits. And actually, I think the most really? interesting... Well, actually, that's that's why I think uh, that's why. Sure? Yeah, <coughs> Partly, uh, if you'd been here to hear what I have to say, I, uh, I think one of the reasons why we had the Mail administration, I was, you know, I was quite clear mm. about that, was they just weren't on top of it, and they did. Uh, so a, a that, can I finish? I, I'll just you can, yeah. um, That actually, in, in, in a, a lot of the explanation about Man Batten doing a runner, it, it does partly explain the Mail uh, administration, mm. um, but also, I mean. You forget the state this country was in. Uh, I mean, I don't think they even had the officers in the Indian colonial office uh, who were on top of it. That's why they were sending the guy who hadn't a clue. Really? Yeah, they, had, they hadn't a clue um, about what he was doing with the Radcliffe line. Um, you know, the, 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 you'd like to think there were other people a bit more. There were people uh, who were a bit more knowledgeable about Indian subcontinent. Uh, Realising, for example, it's not. A, it's not. Society based on religion. There are other uh, things, ethnic and linguistic and considerations. That's something you, you, you read. Any of the uh, the um, a, a lot of the Brits who were interested in India clearly reflect that. Uh, their understanding of the subcontinent uh, is reflected uh, uh, in that. I mean, the, the most intriguing story, which I don't think we ever hear, though, is I think comes back to Nehru. If we're going to discuss the partition. Um, and how he switched from uh, talking about Muslims within India to Muslims of the state. I'm pretty certain that um, there's a, there was a, he, actually before that meeting in March you mentioned, uh, he was here. He was he spent several months in, in London. Uh, I'm 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 sure that's the key to all, and I'm sure Churchill and people like that got through to him and, and suggested the need of why uh, that the, the, the Pakistan ch uh, ch needed to be there. Uh, and I dare say that legacy is something which I'm not in, in, in a position to, to look into, but I hope historians in academia uh, look into that. I, 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 there's no doubt about it. I mean, I, I've shown them. Here's this photo. He's, making a, he's made the effort to get to uh, tea plantations, quite honestly, in that time in the middle of nowhere, to, to, to get the, the, the Bengali Muslims quite clearly lobbied him to get them on to, uh, include it within his vision, which he did. Uh, and then the Muslim League machine actually did get, get people out, Shawani uh, did, did his bit. Uh, people like Sheikh Mujib Rahman went there during that, uh, part, uh, during that poll. Um, it, 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 th 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 there's, I think there's more significance there than I think people realise. And I hope someone in academia, dare I say someone could do a, a bloody good PhD on this. And then there's, there's, a whole, there's a whole base of stuff. And it's probably sitting here in London. I wouldn't be surprised that there's correspondence between Nehru, uh, Jinnah and Churchill at that, uh, at that time. Because uh, um, Churchill would have been out of office, not still pontificating about the Indians, uh, a racist uh, comprehension, but uh, uh, there you are. Any other questions? Yes. I just want to come back to what you said. Well, can I have this show? No, no, no. Can I can't stop me speaking? Yeah, I'm talking twice, and I'm not being rude. No, it's Churchill, not him. It's not him. Yeah, so, 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 so how come you have the power? I don't know the answer. I resent this. I've asked this for three years. And I'm never going to do this. speaking. That Churchill killed five million of my people, so there's an no, I'm not an academic. Yeah. I investigate organized anti-Bengali racism in British universities. 
I'm telling you who I am. One, people, and one million Greeks, or 200,000 Greeks, one, two million Europeans in the same year, but we're holding grain on purpose. If we have that power and idea because of his German origin advisor, which has now been released nine years ago in a very famous book, yeah. my question whether you can answer it now is I'm convinced, and I'm sure we'll find another book, that the English imperial uh, role of genocide, which is now coming out all over the world of Africa, is a public fact. And all my question was, and you may not be able to answer, I'm not expecting an answer. I have lived 40 years under massive discrimination, which now I realize was because of partition attitudes of which race and which individual will be allowed to get degrees, even if they're very well minded, will be allowed to walk safely in British universities, will be allowed to have relationships with other races. I'm talking about heterosexual relationships. It's amazing. But I've realized late in my life that we're living in a country that does not apply the rule of law. And all I wanted to say on camera was I believe we live because of some old 80 year old, some administrator somewhere secretly in the Freemasonic order or you know, which exists. We're living a racial humiliation that we're not proof on Afro Caribbeans, South Asians, that European immigrants who have a bit of money, don't, who've been here 10 years, don't live in any way. And the reason I'm saying this is a fact. It's coming out about Commonwealth minimum. And so I do research as a businessman who just uses money for this. The way that partition and, of course, African genocide informs the policymakers who are not always in government of this country to humiliate illegally and suppress brown and black people from the Commonwealth, but not new immigrants from white backgrounds or from non Commonwealth regions. And I do believe that this history is the key to understanding the English, not the Asian attitudes of world research, the English attitudes which are often not researched in England in, in decision making, in genocide, suppression. Killing, humiliation, and tax looting of brown and black. And that's my point. Thank you. Thank you. Can you call to this gentleman? Uh, Sorry, uh, Thank you for putting this um, yeah. discussion on specifically on the partition of yeah. Syria. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to focus on that. Yeah. That's um, what you've done the research. Yeah. And um, going forward, what could you predict in the future for Syria to be? <laughs> even possibly amalgamating back into India or <laughs> or could it be the case that um, Bengal becomes a whole country again? Because yeah. uh, just to follow yeah. on quickly, I'm not, not going to go on about it. Yeah. But I think for us second generation third generation uh, Bengalis, um, we, we, we get fed the mantra of the 1971 War of Independence. Yeah. But many of us probably don't really um, realise the, um, the, the the partition of Silet for yeah. for, for, for one. and secondly the 1905 partition of Bengal. Yeah. So I think it's great that you're bringing this up because we're learning a bit more than just 1971 yeah. independence. And going forward now, we've seen what's happening in in in, in the, um, the the government of India trying to restore all, all, um, Assamese uh, yeah. to to that locality. But what could the Bangladeshis do, or what, what, what do you see the future of Bangladesh now? And just quickly, we've seen what the Myanmar's government have done in, in yeah. regards to excluding the, 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 the people yeah. of, of Rohingya from, from Burma. Mm -hmm. So, what, what is the vision of Bangladesh in the future? Well, look, I, I, I'm not certainly advocating for Siliti independence or Silit's uh, to get incorporated into India. Let me be very clear on this. I think we've done well. Um, facilities, as I've alluded to, I don't think many of us would be here if we weren't in uh, uh, were in Pakistan and subsequently Bangladesh. Uh, I think the Karen Gonjis have been isolated. They're actually doing well for themselves. I think is, is, is with my, my own personal perspective from what I can see. Uh, so yeah. that, that that's that's where I stand on that. Where the country goes is is quite interesting. One of the things I was reading before here was actually a, a, a comparison between Bangladesh and India. And funny enough, you know, things are actually a lot better in Bangladesh than India uh, on a lot of levels. Life expectancies, um, the, the, the level of growth and what have you, social development certainly. Uh, the country is potentially on, on the point of takeoff, but we shouldn't take for granted some of the oppression that is happening uh, politically. And that, that's my concern. And that's where I, as someone who's got gets a political platform now and again, will, will make my views clear. Uh, that's that's my overriding concern. I think the economy, as long as there's not too much meddling by the government, uh, by the Bangladesh government, will do well. I think it's 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 progressing not because of government. It's actually uh, because uh, they're getting on with it. They're doing quite well. 
just keep the things like education and health and what have you and follow uh, the, uh, the the model of Malaysia and Indonesia and I think the country will be on a, a good track uh, and for probashis like me I, I you know I'm I'm willing to invest in there as well if I get the right vehicles I think we will get better returns investing in dare I say Bangladesh than we will in in, in things here even property now uh, so yeah I, I um, that that yeah, I'm not advocating that at all. I, I think, yeah, no, no, exactly. And but I, I think it's important bearing because I think there are yeah there, there are 71 is important, 47 is important because of this history. But also, as you uh, pointed out, 1905. Uh, because I, I don't know if you've noticed in the background of all my slides, there's a golden bungalow. I mean, we're all we are signed up to that as well, and I don't think it's it's impossible for us. To be uh, to be signed up to Shuna Bangla as well as uh, Silet identities, and the other thing I think people should forget: Silites have actually done very well at Bangla. Uh, I can take you to Dhaka uh, and, and point point time and time again. I, I think sometimes in London you get this suggestion we're not get we're not getting a, a good uh, good deal here and there. Well, I, I, let's put this here aside for a second. Over there, I can I can tell you this in finance. The whole finance sector is uh, dominated, the Bangladeshi banking sector, by senators. Absolutely. So if, that, if that's a major, major arm of the uh, um, uh, of the economy, as, uh, they're pretty pretty entrenched there. You, you know, and I think it'll be very difficult to, to move um, move them out of that position. And it reflects why, dare I say, every finance minister they've had since independence has been a sort of someone of the origin. So yeah, I. I let me be absolutely clear, I'm not using this to, to encourage Sility independence or Silic goes, goes into India. If anything, I'm, I'm saying actually there may be a case for Ker Karen Gonj to come back in, but let them decide. Can you have that lady first? Yeah, yeah I, I, I wanted to go um, more into the fact that um, Mark Bubba voted out the military to um, stay in Assam. How come? Excuse me, hello, let him answer. I, I, I honestly don't know, but that's a question I was asking myself. What was happening in Molly Bazaar? Mm -hmm. Was it happening in the rest of the state? Is it because, did they, I mean, I'm just um, wondering, did they vote to stay in Aspen because obviously Molly Bazaar has quite a high um, Hindu population as well? Well, it could be that, yes. I mean, the, the other thing which I, I would also, I mean, it, it could well be that, but I don't think it's only that. There may be other factors. Can I answer that? So, Mark, I know. You do know why yeah. Molly Bazaar is there. I, I tell me. You know, the commission that decided, the, the decided commission will decide the boundary between this you know, voter data. And that commission got three important points. One is the continuity. The whether somebody, Sesela in, in club, decided to go to Pakistan, but they are 10 miles away from the, you know, the boundary. For example, you know, the other, other parts of the Asham, if they decide, they will not bring it to there. So their honest continuity, that if this land is within the, for example, Mongi Bazaar, it is within the civil. But generally, what it was, yes, it disputed there, but in the, uh, at last, the commission decided yeah. to go so, so, are you saying the subdivisions were decided by the commission beforehand to allow... To, to no, no, after vote, after vote. I'm talking so about you're, after taking, you're saying the subdivisions were determined after, after vote. vote. See, I mean, this is the funny thing about it. I got that, you know where I got that slide from? It was Bangla Wikipedia, which I, I think is a reliable source. So I've never seen it. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. it's like, look, I go to Wikipedia generally for generally my sure. But the, that one, because it's the only one that's been set up, Niaz will know more about uh, who's behind uh, the Bangla Wikipedia. But nonetheless, that's where I got it from. And I was intrigued. And I think, if dare I say, I'm, I'm not going to be able to answer that question for you. But, it's something that does need... I'll send you some information which okay. about this issue okay. they mentioned. Which so they mentioned I'll send you that up. The, the, uh, it's certainly something worth researching a bit f uh, further. I mean, uh, and, and some of the other areas which, I mean, if those of you who may be um, academically inclined... Um, it's a The, uh, I think uh, the, the women's involvement uh, in, in, in the uh, uh, referendum is important. I've given, highlighted uh, a few of 
human sciences. And then the um, there was the Kerem Gonj issue. I, um, that, those three things I think would be worth looking into. Um, so uh, if anyone's got the, the time and inclination uh, to delve into that arena, um, I mean, most of my sources were from websites of my head. Uh, I would love to get one of the actual polling Car. polling um, uh, cards themselves, because uh, and I'm pretty certain they'll, they'll have copies in the, either the British Library or down in um, down in the other main library in Chiswick. Um, all these documents, particularly if, if the Brits were involved, will <laughs> there'll be records of it, and most of it was transferred back transferred back here. At some points, uh, and uh, but particular, yeah, man, back in his papers are all, all the way easily available. So, uh, if you're ever inclined, I, I, I'd uh, encourage you to have a to, to research. And I, I, it is a mystery to me. I, I don't know Molly Bowman well enough to know why that part of syllabus would be different from others. Interesting enough, now with these subdivisions, you, increasingly you do hear people referring to themselves as from Molly Buzzer rather than Sir. So I don't know if that's a reflection of things that have changed or not. Sorry, this Can is... Can we... Okay, well, we're going to take the last three, and then I'll, I've got to tell you, tell, tell you who this uh, this uh, person is, because I, 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 I would be kicking myself over there. Sorry, this gentleman. So, um, sorry, uh, initially I was to ask, basically, um, the Curzon line, yeah, which divided the East Bengal and West Bengal, whether Kakata yeah. was also uh, in, the, um, in East Bengal, which is why they were considered mm. But I also wanted to say that, like, I, I don't. I mean, no disrespect. There was some. I, I don't know. I sometimes feel that some of the stuff that you were saying have the have contention with some of the. So, like the formation of East Bengal and West Bengal, for example, uh, under Karzai, went on to produce like political constituencies as Hindus and Muslims. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that, which then turned into Pakistan and India, which, you know, by building contention and political uh, constitutions, essentially. Uh, between communities was driven by yes people on the ground that wanted to decolonize, but there was there was always a significant difference between those that wanted to decolonize and form you know essentially liberatory states and others that were doing it out of an inherent identity. So um, Fanon talks about kind of like reactionary elements that actually internalize white supremacy. So the idea that white supremacy form uh, teaches us about race and we internalize that. And the reason I say that there were some undertones in what you said, it, it's because when we talk about Assamese refugees, we're actually talking about that same thing. So like the, the government in New Delhi is trying to produce the Indian that is Hindu and Hindi and, and Hindi speaking, and that it, it's using that as part of the violence. That was inherently part of the uh, Pakistan's violence, which, which wanted to produce the Pakistani Muslim, uh, which resulted in a lot of the, the genocide that took place in Bangladesh. And like, and I, I know you say like, uh, thank God we, uh, you know, still have brought it this way. But for me, like, my uncle was beaten up by Pakistani um, soldiers. I know people that died at the hands of Pakistani soldiers. So, you know, for me, still being inside inside uh, Pakistan isn't inherently a, a good thing. Also, uh, but neither is essentially. I'm not saying. I'm saying the entire construction of ethno states is not a good thing. And uh, even when we come back to the Assamese refugees, when, so my mom's from Karim Gorge. Um, sure. Right. Okay. Sure, sure. And the the idea that um, so when when you said we should revisit Karim Gorge in order to discuss the concept of Assamese refugees, I think that's again pandering to the idea of the ethno state where we're going to trade off territories to try and you know. Look, look at people second the idea of territories and ethno states, and I think that is fundamentally important. I mean, like, I'm not grateful that I'm here, like, you know, was it? yes, here in terms of the current material sense, but the reality is that I, you know, I'm here because of the violence of global capitalism, uh, which is essentially what colonialism was, um, and you know, that is why I'm here, you know, and that is why there are resources here, and how my, how my family got here, and that is what produced a lot of the violence that was there. Um, so I just Okay. Well, uh, just to reassure you, I'm not signed up to Modi's uh, Hindu, Hindu-centric uh, idea of Indians. And like I said, when, when I was uh, patting him on the back for sorting out the enclaves problem, I wasn't signed up to his domestic agenda at all. The other thing is that I, I, I did li li limit myself to the period of history around the bill at 47 and afterwards, and I think laid the grounds for subsequent uh, liberation of Bangladesh. 
Uh, I think there's another period of history after 71, and obviously uh, in, 2000, uh, nine, uh, in 1905 when Curzon divided. Interestingly enough, at that point, Select was incorporated in their song. It had been m moving around for some time. Um, so d don't think I've got these kind of ethnic centric uh, notions. And if, if they have come over, I'll pick them up from somewhere and not come up with them myself. The only reason I've, I've raised the Perry and Gond issue is that there's undoubtedly some, at some point the Bangladesh state is going to be in conflict with India about this. Um, and, and I think it's a legitimate issue for a Bangladeshi government to do. The border is not very strong. Now. Yeah, that's true. People just yeah, no, exactly. I, I know that. I've, I've been there uh, myself, actually. Can so we have uh, the last question? Yeah. Last yeah. question. You wanted to say two more. Two more. Okay. Questions rather than comments, if you don't mind. Okay. No, I really enjoyed that. It's so much to learn. And I have to um, play my comments about my own um, history, so which is why I come. So thank you for organizing this kind of gathering. Uh, my one was really around en enclaves. If you could elaborate a bit more on because it took such a long time for this to be resolved, which yeah. was saying two years ago. So I was curious about. Um, the history of that and the story of that, and what did get resolved, and how easy was that transition, and what lessons we could learn from that. And, and I mean, I was curious about um, just the comment about the Bazaar um, uh, question as well, yeah. she's just taken yeah. that. And the first one was, oh, now I've been waiting so long, um, was around, sorry, communal violence during the partition. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I wanted to hear a bit more about that because I, I, um, yeah. I, I understood that with my limited knowledge that Punjab was the you know the worst case, but I wanted to hear about the Bangladeshi context and you well, didn't touch on it. Yeah, that, that's a theory on my part. I've got to say, I mean, I, I, am, I, I have no evidence to prove that, but all I can say is from what the stories I have heard at that time, I haven't heard that come up often. For example. Uh, my, my father's book does mention the Bengal famine and seeing that, and what have you, but it doesn't mention any common stuff. And I, I think actually in some ways this, this was a better way of resolving those issues, dare I say, than, than the actual uh, common violence itself. And I did allude to the other thing which I did think didn't help at all, was that those who were going to make that move had no idea even up until independence. Actually they only realised two months afterwards. But it's a bit like when, you know, when I was part of the um, City Hall with Ken's administration, if we had said, OK, uh, we'll have congestion charging and the following day we put it in place, you would have had riots on the roads. You know, people would have, uh, um, if we didn't tell them what the boundaries are, we took four years, uh, three years actually telling people what the boundaries are before we did that. And if you think about that, that's an imaginary boundary. This is a political boundary. Uh, and I do think the, uh, the, the British Raj has got a lot of explaining to do. And they can't get on their high horse uh, and, 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 and send a, some kind of expert when, when these similar issues come up. The enclaves, Lord knows why it's, it took so long. I think um, it just kept falling down in the priorities. Um, but uh, the, the, the worst cases of this are were between India and the Bangladesh bound border um, in the northeast, because that in doubts. Actually, there were enclaves within enclaves. If you, if you look at the ge uh, ge 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 uh, geographers who, who got an obsession about geography, this is one of the specialist subjects. It's, uh, it's a bizarre thing, but most of the worst instances were here, and it was actually a legacy of the British Raj, without any doubts. Uh, it's, only re it's, only, yeah, it's only two years ago it's been sorted out. So, Can well, so just a quick follow-up. So this was resolved, in your opinion, do you think it was resolved satisfactory? Well, as far as I understand, both governments are happy. So I, I, I haven't met anyone in those enclaves, though. Yes. And I think, I dare say there are two. Has anyone come across anyone who lives in an enclave? I, I haven't. But the, 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 point, the, point, the, the interesting thing is, though, actually, it's highly unlikely you would have ever got a going in touch with them because they're, they're, they would have been restricted quite considerably. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, uh, but I, I presume that it was something which. Um, I mean, it was interesting that Modi and Sheikh Hasina actually sorted this out very quickly. Uh, there were no votes in, there yeah, were no votes yeah. in the yeah. had in resolving it. Yeah, that was true. The actual resolving yeah. resolution was just a spray of one. You have the enclaves on your side of the big yeah. We, we have to kind of move on. Yeah. One more last question. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, you mentioned the, uh, the enclaves. The interesting point was, yeah, the, the third order. Yeah, the third order, that's it, yeah. And I think, I think you did have satisfactory resolution because I think the people they were given the option of whether they wanted to be Bangladeshi or Indian and they were allowed to move and stuff like that. Well, they gave them the option. I think they all gave oh, them the option. Right. So I think pe okay. pe the people were happy. And I think it's, it's made political win. I mean, this is sort of a niche of, uh, you need someone who sort of 
as a weird specialism in this sort of thing. Yeah, I think Modi yeah. has some of them. But it's a political will which sort of uh, had it, I think, previously. No one, no one was too bothered about it. Yeah. Uh, my question was, uh, I think you raised a couple of interesting questions about uh, sort of Karen going generally, uh, what would happen if we were part of uh, East Pakistan and Bangladesh. Um, my question is so the, the cultural identity within current language. Um, so in Silic, you see sort of this part of that cultural identity now in Bangladesh. Um, I think probably before uh, before East Pakistan, you might have had it. You, you might not be so tied into sort of East Bangladesh. Um, you, you might have sort of shifted between Bengal and Assam even. Um, so I was wondering how how do people view themselves in current language? Do they view themselves? I, I, I'm probably not the best person. This gentleman over there who's, who's got family there is probably better. But all I observed from watching their TV channel was that it was in Bengal and they made reference to the valley. So they've clearly got their own identity within Assam. Um, and, I, and the fact that someone like me, a second generation Brit, could understand what was being said on their TV channel made me think, well, actually, there is some commonality there. It's a bit like, you know, when, when the, uh, the Rohingyas, you know, I, I, I half understand what they're saying in their interview, don't, don't we all? Yeah. Yeah, tell me if you're wrong, yes, I'm yeah. wrong, we, we do. Anyway, look, the final thing I'm going to say, final thing I'm going to do is tell you who this person is. Now, the, uh, the person I thought some of you might recognise is the, the, gent the tall gentleman on the far right, in white. I think I know that. Is it Bashani? No, 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 no. It's, it's, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I can see that. It's Tosadul Gakma. Tosadul Gakma. I mean, it's Tosadul I mean, I, I met a lot. He, the funny thing about I, I, I actually grew up in his house, uh, in his house, which he had in Streatham in the 60s. I immediately recognised him straight away. Uh, but uh, in, in his last 30 odd years, he was, uh, in, 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 the, uh, in, in the East End, campaigning on loads of campaigns for, for many decades. But people forget where he began. He was one of these student agitators that was meeting Jinnah in '46 uh, to, to get so that, uh, incorporated within uh, the Pakistani vision. Uh, that's how far he went back, and I don't think many people realise that when they were dealing with him in the East End. It, it was also alleged that he was offered many positions in Pakistan, uh, military regimes, but he turned down. Um, but nonetheless, I thought that with one person that uh, an East, East London audience might, um, might notice. He, he died in the early 90s. Uh, but yeah, that's him in the guys that I think a lot of people don't say. That's the government. He wrote a book, a book as well. Yeah, he, he's, he's done many things, but he, he's the only one there that I know has stepped foot in the East End and, and, and had been around. And the only person I would expect anyone here to recognise, because I, I recognised him straight away. The rest you won't recognise. I think we've been. Actually, when he had a stroke, uh, me and a friend of ours, we went to see him in the hospital. He was alone in the room, but he didn't want us to be there. That's the impression we got. <laughs> anyway, okay, well, yeah. uh, but he was a nice man. I used to speak to him. Sometimes yeah. see him yeah, can, can around. Have you wrote the introduction to this book? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank